Stephen Twigg. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The Department's produced a school-by-school -school analysis of the impact of the proposed funding formula. And for schools in Liverpool, the results are worrying. 80% are forecast to lose funding. We're set to lose around 1.3 million in the schools block in the first year, 1819. And when the formula is fully implemented, unless it changes, that will increase to just over £3 million. I know that consultation is still under but it's very important for schools in my constituency that they know as soon as possible so that they can plan their budgets for the future. I welcome the fact that the Liverpool uh, settlement will mean more money for high-needs funding. Uh, there is, however, concern from the Council and schools that this high-needs funding won't be available in time to alleviate the cuts in the schools block. Can I ask the Minister, when he responds to the debate, what timescale the Government envisages for full implementation of the new formula, in particular the high-needs funding element of that formula? As we know, early years education is vital to the life chances of pupils. I have two nursery schools in my constituency, Ella Green and East Prescott Road. Both of them are rated outstanding by Ofsted. Both are now very concerned about the Government's plans for nursery school funding. I seek assurances from the Minister today that long-term funding will be secure for our nursery schools so they can continue their excellent work in providing quality early years education. When I saw the motion for today, I wrote to the heads of schools in my constituency asking them for their concerns. Blackmore Park Infant School in West Derby told me about their need for repairs. They are using four mobile classrooms which are three years over their shelf life. The school, the head teacher tells me, does not have the money to replace them because, because of the financial pressures that they face. I give way to one of the friends. Yes. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, I also, like my friend, wrote to um, local schools. And does my friend agree with me that, it, given the importance of this subject, it's unsurprising there's so many people trying to speak today? My honourable friend is absolutely right. And the financial pressures that the schools spoke about are the ones that are highlighted in the opposition motion today. Secondary schools are also feeling the pinch. The head of St Edward's College in my constituency said, and I quote, small budget lines are being nibbled away, and in the end, this is going to have a massive cumulative impact. The head teacher of St Cecilia's Infant School told me that that she's worried about the impact of budget cuts on staffing levels, particularly with regard to support staff. Pupils with special needs have particular challenges for school budgets. The head of Crotsdith Community Primary School raised with me the issue of educating those whose needs are more challenging and complex. The head teacher of Redbridge High School, a very good special school in my constituency, is worried that the imposition of a national funding model for children with additional needs has taken away local flexibility to be able to move money around. Another of the fantastic special schools in my constituency is Bankview High School. School. They said to me that they are concerned about the impact of cuts elsewhere in the public sector. Their head teacher said to me, how are we able to make our pupils effective members of society who are able to be employed if support agencies such as CAMS are having their funding reduced? I urge the Minister, when he responds to the... I'm delighted to be here. I'm very, great, I'm very grateful to him. He's making very reasonable points on behalf of his schools, but does he recognise that for small cities like my constituency of Gloucester, it's fundamentally unequal to receive per-pupil funding that's about 50% less than the metropolitan city area that he represents? And it's right that the Secretary of State addresses that. I certainly recognise that it is hugely challenging to ensure fair funding for all schools in all parts of the country. But the cuts that I'm referring to and the cuts that my honourable friend, the Shadow Secretary of State, talked about are not to do with the national funding formula. I addressed it because it's an important issue. I addressed it because it is contained in the government's amendment to the motion. But the motion is about the funding pressures that schools face before the implementation of the national funding formula, and we need to address that as well. I will give way, yes. Um, like, like, him, like him, I consulted uh, with my head teachers, and Jackie Sainsbury, the head teacher of Rookhill Lees Primary School, 55% kids on pupil premium, said, how am I going to find £230,000 out of next year's budget? 
don't those on the other side of the house have a duty to help um, head teachers like Mrs Sainsbury? My honourable friend is absolutely right, and schools across the country, in constituencies in all parts of the country, are facing these challenges. And in the end, my view, Madam Deputy Speaker, is that investment in education should be a priority, and that is something that we should be able to agree on across party bases. I'm running out of time. I urge the Minister to listen to the concerns of schools in Liverpool and elsewhere so that school budgets are protected. It is vital that schools have the money that they need to be able to deliver the quality education that children and young people deserve.